Hi there, welcome to Tech Post Guides. My name is Ravi, and today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can block ads from your Wi Fi or LAN network at home and also block all the malicious websites and trackers from tracking your online activities. Now, this will not only help you safeguard your privacy but also help you save a lot of bandwidth and data which is consumed in loading those ads. Plus, you can manage your Wi Fi or LAN network more efficiently and you can have more control over your network so let's get started and let's build a network wide ad blocking system at your home now before starting this video time for our sponsors so this video is sponsored by pdf element from wondershare which is the best and the cheaper alternative to adobe acrobat pdf reader with pdf element you can create edit annotate convert sign pdf documents and much more on your mac computers if you can't copy text from an image based pdf file you can convert it to office files such as word documents without losing any formatting layout or tables from the document besides you can share your feedbacks directly on the pdf file with your colleagues and co-workers at your organization or your home plus you can create forms in the pdf documents protect the pdf documents and much more using the pdf element from wondershare to know more about pdf element please follow the link given in the description currently you can get up to 40 percent off if you follow the link given below now coming back to our video to block ads from your network you need raspberry pi so i have the raspberry pi 3 that you can buy at a very cheaper price now since raspberry pi 4 is launched you can also choose Raspberry Pi 4 which comes with a faster processor and more memory but you can also use Raspberry Pi 3 module. The another thing that you need is an SD card. It should be at least 2 GB or more. You also need a LAN cable and a power supply of 5 volt 2 ampere to power up this Raspberry Pi. Now that the hardware part is done, let's move to the software part. So you need a Mac or a Windows PC. So I'll be using the Windows PC to demonstrate this uh, guide. So on your Windows PC, you need an operating system to run on your Raspberry Pi. So we are choosing Diet Pi, which is a very lightweight Debian based Linux distro it doesn't consume a lot of memory or processing power it's quite lightweight and optimized for this ad blocking task so let's download it so go to the dietpi.com and click on download select raspberry pi and then click on the raspberry pi click on the download link and it will start downloading the packaged os file you have to extract that and keep it in a folder Next thing you have to download the Rufus app which is a quite lightweight app. It's a standalone app so it doesn't need installation. You just have to download it. Next you need to download the Putty app which we will use to connect to our Raspberry Pi through our network and manage it. And it's also quite lightweight. If you're using Mac Putty is not available so in that case you can use the terminal. Now let's flash the DietPy OS file on the SD card. So connect your SD card to your system and open the Rufus app. Select the SD card and then select the DietPy image file. Once you have selected the file, click open and then click on start. Click OK to confirm. Make sure there's nothing on the SD card otherwise it will be deleted permanently. This will take a while and once it's done, all you have to do is disconnect the SD card from your system and connect it to your Raspberry Pi. You also need to connect the Ethernet cable that is connected to your Wi-Fi router. You also need to connect the power supply so that it turns on. Now we need to edit some settings in our Wi-Fi router. So let's log into our Wi-Fi router. I'm using the TP-Link C20 dual band Wi-Fi router and we need to go to the dhcp settings you can find it in your router settings or you can refer to your wi-fi routers manual in dhcp settings you have to set a range of ip address i've set it to 100 to 199 you can set it to anywhere by default it's already set but if you want to do it you can change it next you have to go to the dhcp client list and there you will find the diet pi listed 
now what we need to do is we need to assign a permanent ip to our diet pie so that it remains the same always and it does not change and it's very important so we need to copy the mac address of our diet pie and then go to address reservation click on add new and then enter the mac address of the diet pie that we copied and also enter the ip address that you want to assign permanently so i'm going to assign 112 permanently so enable it and then save it once you've done that reboot your router after your router has rebooted successfully and your system is connected to your wi-fi open the putty app and enter the ip address of the diet pi click open and you will be connected to your raspberry pi click yes to confirm and then log in as root and the password is diet pi in small letters so let's just enter it root password is diet pi enter okay press enter so if you want to change the default password you can do that right now and i suggest you that you do this it's very important so click on ok and then enter the new password make sure it's secure you need to confirm it again and then click ok now you can also change the unix password and i suggest you that you do that so i'll also change it now it says serial console is currently enabled you can click cancel or click ok now we need to install some software so go to install and press enter select ok and press enter and this will install some softwares which are required and uh, this may take a while to complete once it's done it will ask you to join the diet pi survey you can join it or just purge the uploaded data as you wish now we need to enter the diet pi configuration settings to do that you have to enter diet pi hyphen config press enter and this will open a pop-up now move your selection to network options adapter and then go to ethernet press enter then go to change mode from dhcp to static and then in the static ip you have to enter the ip address of the raspberry pi that we assigned permanently which is 112 in this case once you do that apply all the changes and uh, click ok click ok again click ok again to purge all wi-fi related apt packages now once done you have to exit this diet pi configuration settings so just go back back and then exit it now we need to install pi hole it's an open source project so go to pi-hole.net this is a website click on install and it will take you to the github project page where you will find this command you have to copy this command and enter into the putty terminal or your mac os terminal and then press enter this will start installing the pi hole and once it's installed you have to set it up so to set it up it will show you a prompt and we'll continue with that You will see a prompt that this installer will transform your device into click yes enter so click enter and then we have already assigned a static ip address a permanent ip address to our raspberry pi and we have also configured this in our uh, diet pi os so we don't need to do that just select the dns server and these are the default block host files we can add more host files to block more ads and trackers so just click ok and then again ok we have already assigned this ip so yes we will be using this ip again click on ok do you wish to install the web admin interface yes we do web server yes we do block queries yes show everything yes ok and that's it that's all you need to do once it's completely installed and set up you will see a password on the screen which you have to copy and store it carefully this will be used to log in to the admin interface and uh, do not lose it otherwise you may lose the access to your web admin interface and you may need to reconfigure pihole which is a time consuming process and very complicated so 
to confirm that the pie hole is installed just enter pie hole and you will see this list of commands once they are shown you just have to reboot your raspberry pi so type reboot and press enter once your raspberry pi is rebooted go to your mac computer or your windows pc and enter the ip address of your raspberry pi which is 112 so 192.168.0.112 and click on this link then enter your password that you copied and click on login and this will take you to the web admin page where you can add more host files to block ads or you can whitelist some domains for example from now onwards you won't be able to access google analytics website or the adsense website if you are a blogger or a youtuber also you may not be able to access certain website that you used to access earlier so in that case you can just go to the whitelist and uh, enter the url of that website and save it and once you do that you will be able to access it right off so you can manage all the domains all the websites that you want others to access on your network and block websites that you don't want others to access on your network and it's very easy now to add host files you need to search it online i've linked a few host files that you can use and add to your host list all you have to do is copy the urls and enter it and then it will be added quickly now there's only one thing which is remain and that we need to do on our wi-fi router so before we do that let's load a website uh, we are loading our own website techpost.org you can check out other guides here exclusive guides so as you can see that there are ads which are loaded here a few ads you can see these are google ads and you may have visited a few websites where you see those pop-up ads they're very disturbing so from now on all these ads will be blocked so let's go to our wi-fi routers dhcp settings and in the dns server we have to enter the ip address of our raspberry pi because our raspberry pi is now uh, ad blocking dns server so once we enter the dns server ip we have to click on save and then restart our wi-fi router and once it's restarted make sure the lan cable is connected and the raspberry pi is on once the wi-fi restarts if you load this website again you will see blank spaces or the gray spaces without any ads so from now on if you visit any website or you open any app where you used to see a lot of ads or a few ads you won't see a single ad from now onwards so whether you have connected your iphone your android device your mac computer or a windows pc you won't see a single ad and also trackers will be blocked and in case if you are redirected to a malicious websites it will be blocked right away so you don't need a web protection antivirus tool which consumes a lot of memory and they don't block ads so this is one way to do it the another way i'll talk about that in a different video so if you are not connected to your wi-fi network but connected to mobile data you can also block ads in that situation on your android device not on iphone or windows pc so there's an app which i'll discuss in the next video but for now if you like this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel for more videos like this now before ending this video i have a request that please whitelist youtube and your favorite websites that uh, you often read because ads are the major source of revenue for these websites including mine and uh, we earn revenue from the ads so if you block ads we won't get a single penny so make sure you do that and support your favorite creator or favorite blogger or favorite websites that you often read with that said this was all in this video guys be safe thank you for watching have a good day